for uh, the guys who probably don't know, this is Gene and Miller, our, one of our eighth grade small group leaders. Gene's so grateful for you sharing today. Well, uh, how many of you guys have been on, what is it called, the Iron Dragon at Cedar Point? It's favorite. Yeah, we all have, right? Totally love it. It's a really good ride. Well, two summers ago, you probably already know this, but they uh, created a night version of Iron Dragon with virtual reality. How many of you guys have done that? The virtual reality one? Uh, a few, two of you, one of you. All right, so let me tell you about it. So I have been wanting to do this for the last three summers since it ever since it debuted. They debuted it at I believe it was Halloween weekends, and my kids would never go with me because we always wanted to do other stuff, and we'd always had like poor Maverick was with us, and he doesn't ride any roller coasters yet because he's not tall enough. And so this year, I finally got them to go on it with me. I was so geeked, right? So we stayed in line for 45 minutes. Got up there, it's Noah, my 17-year-old son, and I in one cart, and then my sweet wife, Jen, and our 19-year-old daughter right behind us, and they put on these, like, 3D glasses, like a galaxy phone, you see the 3D virtual reality things. So they put you on, they put it on your head, and all of a sudden, I mean, the Iron Dragon is a really fun roller coaster in the first place, but all of a sudden, you are now a monk in some kind of castle scene, and there's a horse in front of you, and you are controlling the horse. You have the horse's reins in your hand. You look down, and you're wearing sandals, and you're in a hood. And again, you're in this castle area, right? So you're like, okay, this is kind of cool, right? So then they start the ride, and I'm looking all around, checking stuff out. They start the ride, and I start hearing people like, oh, oh, cool, hey, I'm moving. And I'm like, okay, well, maybe mine's just taking a little longer to get going. Because mine wasn't doing anything. I was just sitting there with my horse, and it was just sitting there. So then we start going. We go down the first part, then we start going up. And all of a sudden, Noah right behind me and the people in front of me and even people behind me, they're like, oh, wow, oh, cool, oh, look at that, oh, neat. And for some reason, my, my mask isn't working. I'm just with the horse. And so I'm sitting here going, mine's not working. Mine's not working. And, of course, you know, none of the controllers can hear me or anything. So while my family and all these other people were experiencing this awesome virtual reality roller coaster ride, I'm sitting there just on the horse. Like, and at one point, because, like, somehow it moves, like, when you move to the left, the screen moves to the left. Well, because mine wasn't hooked up right, I moved. So, like, I literally spent most of the ride looking in the back of the wagon. Like, you probably don't even know this, but there are three barrels in the wagon. I know this because I sat there staring at them for the whole ride. So, we get done with the ride. They're like, hey, how was your ride? And I'm like, it was terrible. And so they let me do it again. And uh, thankfully, the second time, it worked. And it was really fun. I won't spoil it for you so you can enjoy it. But it was so fun. And I have no idea how they made that thing work. Like, how do you do that? Like, I understand you can make a roller coaster ride, like on, you know, Roller Coaster Tycoon, and I can understand, like, timing it up. Like, that makes sense to me, but I don't know how you would time up each individual car to start at a certain time. Like, that kind of technology blows my mind. It, like, makes no sense to me. I just have no idea how it works. Well, I think a lot of times we kind of feel that same way with God, that we feel like, how does this God thing work. I don't get it. Like, some of you guys, like, have been going to church forever, and you have other friends that are like, they are having this awesome relationship with God. They're enjoying, they're like, raising their hands in worship. They feel, they seem different to you. They just seem to, like, really be enjoying this relationship with God. And you're here going, I don't get it. I'm, I'm experiencing the same thing, but it's not it's not happening for me. It's kind of like me on the ride where everyone's freaking out and I'm sitting here staring at barrels the whole time. I'm going, I don't get it. Why isn't this working? And I think sometimes we feel that way with God. We're just going, I don't get it. I don't know how, how does it work? How do you believe in a God you can't see or, or touch or, or feel? I mean, I, I just don't, I don't get it. How does it work? So we're going to explore that uh, this morning. So I, I certainly agree with Ken and understand what Ken went through with all that there, there are things out there that are very confusing, especially to someone my age. All this technology really, you know, messes with my brain. And, and my grandkids put apps on my phone and help me kind of be in the 21st century. But I still don't get it all. Some things I just look at because I really don't know how to, like, post some.
something in that in that app, and, and so I get it, and I get how we can be confused about God. So I think probably some of you really wonder, what is all this God stuff about? How does it work? Uh, and maybe some of you wonder, is God even really out there? And if he's out there, maybe you've wondered why it's so hard to understand what he does and, and why he's doing it. And, and I think that there's a lot of reasons for why this could happen. And number one, I think the main reason is that we can't see God. We, we aren't able to see God. And number two, um, uh, if we believe in him, we can't feel his presence around us. So that makes believing in him and understanding him and how he works so much harder. So, uh, and, and then feeling his presence with us, you know, some of you probably struggle and wonder, what? what what's that all about? When you go through difficult things, like many of you are going to start middle school for, for the sixth grade, first time you've gone to middle school after being, you know, in that kind of protective environment of elementary school. So you're probably feeling challenged and wondering how that's going to work out. And so, and I, I still, at my age, go through things that make me feel like I'm kind of alone. I, I don't really want to do this. Um, and then I think, I'm not alone. God is with me. And, and you know, I get in tune with God, so I feel his presence. And some of you probably are wondering, what? What is all that about? So, um, we've all kind of thought of and had questions about, things in a lot of these areas. So some of you even maybe walked in here today thinking, is this God stuff even worth my attention? I'm here because my parents are in church and I got to be here, but is it even worth my attention? And we have a hard time trusting and believing in God because we can't see him and we certainly don't understand how he works. So deep down we maybe question if any of this faith in God stuff can be real. And others of you, like Ken said, you, you, you're, you're good, you're strong, you've got faith, and you go to church, and, and you come to small group, and you pray, and you do all the things that Christians do, but if you're really, really honest, and, and I have to say, if I'm really, really honest, sometimes I ask the questions, and you may ask the questions that we're talking about today. So, you know, we act like we're real good in our faith, we're real strong in our faith, but we sometimes have doubts and questions. And you know what? That's okay. It's okay to have doubts and questions. And that can actually be a really good thing for your faith because it makes you start looking for answers and, and learning more about God. And so that is actually how you make your faith grow. That's how you become stronger and developing a relationship with God. So here it is. If we can't see God, we can't hear God, we can't go out and take a walk with God in person, how are we supposed to trust him? How are we supposed to believe in him and follow what he says? Yeah, I think that's a question that not only do we deal with today, but I think they've been dealing with that since the time Jesus was was alive. I mean, how do you believe in a God and trust a God that you can't see or or touch or feel or hear or any of those things? Well, so grateful for this story that we're going to talk about today in the book of John. It's Jesus' last night uh, on earth that, that he knows of, and uh, he knows that he's going to die the very next day. And so he's telling his disciples, his best friends, everything he can, uh, just his last, as you can imagine, if you knew you were going to die the very next day, you would get together with your friends, your loved ones, you would tell them everything you want them to know. And so Jesus is telling them all these things, and one of the things he tells them is that he and God are the same person. Well, the disciples are not getting this at all. In fact, Philip asked him, this is one of his disciples, Philip, uh, he had walked with Jesus for the last three years, been with him, and he's like speaking for everyone else. He's like, I don't, I don't know, Jesus, how can you say this? Like, maybe if you would just show us the Father, if you would just show us the Father, I think we would understand this better. And then Jesus says a couple things that really, uh, I think, help clarify what he meant. Look at what Jesus said. 
He said, don't you know me, Philip? Even after I have been among you such a long time? Well, yeah, Philip did know him. He did understand him, and he had been there, but he still didn't get it. So what, what could Jesus be talking about? How does knowing Jesus, how does, that, how does knowing who Jesus is, knowing how, who God is? And so look at what Jesus says next. He says, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. Let's say that out loud together. Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. Uh, Jesus responded that way because he wanted Jesus to know, he wanted Philip to understand that knowing him was the same as knowing God. In that moment, Jesus was not only saying that he and God were the same, he was saying to Philip, everything that I say and do is exactly what God would say and do in these same situations. And so the idea that we want to get is that Jesus is the perfect image of who God is and how he works. And think about this for a moment, how much this must have blown their minds, because they had been with Jesus. They had seen Jesus raise people from the dead. They had seen Jesus cure sicknesses. They had seen Jesus take someone who was paralyzed and have them walk again. They had seen Jesus take a woman who was put in a really bad situation and treat her with grace and dignity and love. They had walked with Jesus. They knew who he was. It wasn't a question of, of did they know him or not. They had seen him work, and they, they loved him and trusted him. And so before their conversation, you can imagine Philip was going, how could someone, how can I believe and follow a God that I've never seen, that I can't touch, that has never spoken to me? And Jesus gives them the answer right there. Right then, Philip understood that Jesus was God on earth, a walking, talking, living, breathing, real life representation of his father God. And so all he had to do, if he wanted to know who God was, all Philip had to do was look to Jesus. And that's exactly the same for us. And that's the big idea we want you guys to get today, is that getting to know Jesus is how we get to know God. His heart, his actions, his, his uh, worldview, his idea, who he is. The more we get to know Jesus, the more we get to know who God is. We get a chance to understand how God works and what he cares about most when we choose to learn who Jesus is and to follow him. So the idea here is that we can look to Jesus to see a perfect picture of who God is and what he is like. And so learning who Jesus is, is a really big part of being able to trust God. That's right. So if we're going to get to know God better by getting to know Jesus, then we have to know where to start, right? So maybe you're still struggling. You don't fully believe all of this God stuff. Or maybe you're not sure if Jesus was telling the truth to Philip. But I want to encourage you that if you get to know Jesus a little better, Please try to get to know Jesus a little better before you give up on God altogether. And and maybe you do believe in God, but you struggle uh, to understand Him. So no matter where you're at in your in your in your belief, in your faith, in your walk with God, I want to ask you to take just one of the one just one of the following steps this week to get to know Jesus a little better. So number one think. Take some time this week to think about what Jesus said and what it would mean to your life if it's actually true. So what would it mean for you to believe that Jesus was God on earth? Something to just think about. And another thing, number two, you can move. So maybe today you're beginning to understand who Jesus is in a whole new way. And so for you, a next step might be moving toward God or toward a relationship with him for the first time. So if that's the case, then, then I say talk to a Christian adult. Talk to your small group leader. Talk to your parents. Talk to Ken. Talk to a pastor. Talk with someone who's, who's a strong Christian person who can help you take that next step of having Jesus in your heart and living for him. And number three, experience. If you are already 
in, in, you know, you're in God's family, you got Jesus in your heart, and you're taking steps to know him better, then this week try something new. Try a new experience that you've maybe never done before that will help you get to know Jesus better. And one example would be when you wake up in the morning before you even get out of bed to go to school, because a lot of you are going back to school this week, uh, maybe pray, say a prayer, have a morning prayer, have a morning talk with, with Jesus, and, and that will get your day off to a good start. Or if, if that's just not something you can do because it takes, you know, two hours to get you out of bed in the morning, then maybe you can read a chapter of the Bible every night before you go to bed. That's a really good way to get to know Jesus better. Uh, and then something that you guys might really uh, get into because of your age, maybe you can listen to a Christian podcast uh, from YouTube or whatever all those little things are on the internet. And uh, maybe it's from somebody that uh, puts things together specifically for middle schoolers. So it'll be right on your level. Be, oh man, I get this. I really get what they're talking about. And for some of you musical people, maybe you could listen to a new song of, about Jesus, and that might speak to your heart. That's what usually speaks to my heart, because I like tuning into uh, Christian radio and listening to all the new songs that people come out with. So whatever it is, maybe even serving at church, maybe helping down in, in with the little kids in KC, whatever it is, try something new this week a new experience that will help you get closer to Jesus, get to know God better, and um, it'll be good for you. Well, no matter what is the next best step for you, we want you to remember the big idea today, that getting to know Jesus is how we get to know God. And understanding how God works is vital in learning how to do what Jesus says matters most, and that is to love God and to love God others. We'll always have questions about who God is and what he does and why he does stuff. The great thing is if we look to Jesus and his life, we can know exactly who God is, what his heart is, and what he's about. So as you go to small groups today, I want you to be thinking about this question is, what is one question I have about who God is? What is one question I have about who God is?